Welcome everyone. This is Apex Comics. Oh yes, this is, was a passion project of mine back in. It started around 2008, uh, around late fall, and I started working on this sketches. What have you? I have a huge World War II comics influence. Uh, it started all with this USA Comics number one, featuring the Defender. Defender appeared in four issues back in 1941. Uh, of course, published by Timely Comics, which later became Marvel. And this is a, I had to pick up this book because I don't know what the hell happened to this guy. This guy was basically a copy of Captain America. This is a Joe Simon Jack Kirby cover. And, uh,. Inside here, it never actually told the adventurers of this maniacal Nazi scientist uh, growing a, a U.S. Army general. <laughs> the general is kidnapped by this weird-looking Nazi vampire-looking guy, like a ghoul. And, uh, and so inside, it never explained this adventure. So I took it upon myself to do my own, interpreted from this cover, USA Comics number one. And so there you have it. I'll call this character USA Defender. And it's basically my own, but I took it from that character, Don Stevens, who's a Marine, who's a, AKA the Defender. And so I still use that name, Don Stevens, for this. I took it upon myself to publish it on my own. And so it took a lot of work, which is a work of passion. I really had a fun time doing it. Um, so here you go. Oh. I'll try to get through some of this. A lot of these pages are, are correlated. They're 32 pages. They're two adventures in one book. They're originally a 32 pager. Plus I'm going to actually show you some original um, pencil art and inks. So we'll just kind of go at it at a time here. Alright, well, let's get started. Mm -hmm. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Defender and Rusty. We both thank you for purchasing this funny book, comic book. Ah, it's great feeling being on a printed page again. It's such a long time. Rusty and I can't wait to chronicle our great adventure and beat up some evil Nazis. So wonderful, readers. Sit back and relax. We'll take over from here. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Excuse the, correl the uh, correlated pages. It's the way it's been printed. Starting the first adventure, the first page. Downtown, Middleton, New York, where U.S. Marines Don Stevens and Rusty meet up with Sally Keene. General Sanders from the War Department sent me an important information photo for the Defender and Rusty to analyze since I trust both to get this to them. I'll need to know details. This is Army General William Preston. He has been captured overseas by Nazi spies close to Berlin. The Nazis believe he has a secret strategy that can defeat the Third Reich and end the World War. Their mission is to get the general back to the States, safe and sound. Yow, who is that freak? That's a Nazi SS commander notoriously named the Ghoul. Yeah, the Ghoul. Vampires. This is a tough mission for Rusty and me. I need to play this. He's definitely a creepy character. It looks extremely dangerous. We'll get these to the Fender and Rusty, Sally. All right. Well, um, the next page. Um, yeah, here we go. They're actually uh, in their parachute gear. Which, and I'll show you the, I actually have a color page here. Get out real quick. Yeah, here we go. Nice bombastic color. Here it is right here. Yes, a secret marine cargo plane flies over the enemy territory in Berlin. The skydiving is great. You having fun? Yeah, kid, sure. So he goes, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, how's that kid do it? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm trying to maintain my composure of my fear of heights, and he's lapping up like a sky cowboy. I have to continue to set a good example for Rusty, or else I'm cooked. 
seven minutes later. Ah, whoa, I've never seen anyone de-harness a parachute so fast and put it away in record time. Now he's talking to a nearest army unit. That guy is definitely a sufficient hero. <laughs> Carcino knows inside his head. Defender's very insecure about heights. Yes, we're 40 paces away from the east gate. Give us 20 minutes and then proceed. So you got 30 paces later. You give a good lookout. I'm going to check the second building. Uh, to the left and crash on some goose steppers. You're nuts. Let me get translated German. Ah, that General Preston is a stubborn character. Not even a ghoul can make him talk. Time to crush your party. And make you guys talk. And so we get into these pages. I. Oh, priming. Um, yeah. Flip it over. And a nice two page spread. Well, I have a big shot of this. Let me get to the. <sighs> Excuse me, folks. <laughs> this is so damn cool. Damn it, you guys. Alright. Well, I do have a page. Actually, I'll show you a nice big old page. This is actually what it looks like. Two pages together. But, I do have a little bit of a dialogue here. So, he's kicking them out of the way. Actually, it looks like this. Uh, <laughs> so, he goes, Ah, oh, you crops got to... Ah, uh, you crowds are going to tell me where General Preston is being held after you gather some of all American lumps. So crack. There he goes. And it's turn the page here. And nice. Good inking. Thank you. Uh, worked quite hard on this. If you're looking for the general, you're too late. Well, then, it's lights out. Crack. And he grabs that gun. Smacks both of us. Get out of my way. Smack. And so, continues on to... Uh, that is... It's no use trying to get answers from those krauts. I'd best go outside before I get a hold up with more Nazis. I wonder how Rusty is doing. I bet he's... What the f... That's a German Panzer. Known as the most powerful tank in the world. This is like David and Goliath. Now to find his weak spot. And it's obvious. And there's the tank pinpointing at him. He throws the rifle into the hole of the tank gun. Shoom! It bombs through, and he's lifted into the air. It falls flat in the mud. Oh no! What is he landed into? We well, got the Krauts pinpoint at him. Evil looking Nazis. Uh oh! I'm sure in a pickle now. And. Knocks the guns knocked out of their hands. And it's rusty. So are you expecting a cavalry? Cause you're looking at him. Nice entrance. What's up with the machine gun? It's stolen. Got tired of being overpowered by smelly goons. That's why I spent extra time to target practice. Cheers. Quit stalling and go kick some Nazi ass. <laughs> So he goes in. We'll take a nice color approach here. The def USA Defender goes in. Clocks a bunch of Nazis. Where are, you, your, where are your evil smiles now? Crack. 
Let's go find the general. And stop, stop. Ah, there he is. Uh, general, it's nice to see the whites of your eyes. Are you ready to reveal your plan against the Third Reich? Never! Well then, be prepared to be a hot boiling stain. Wait, you can't do this. Stop! Ah. And... Continuation here. Oh, where did I get to? Ah. Ah! Rusty, that yelling came from that building over there. Yeah, let's check it out. Whoa, not so fast, Defender. Wait up. Yeah, coming from a guy who ran past me. Be careful, this could be a trap. Yeah. Okay. Yarg! Yeah, they must be beyond that door. Let's keep it quiet and head downstairs. Since I have the gun, I'll go first. That's General Preston tied up. I think we've seen enough. <laughs> the Defender. You will never rescue the General. You have it all wrong, ghoul. Hugo, kill him! Ha! You dress like a patriotic pansy. I will make this easy and very painful. I wouldn't count on it, Fritz. Ha! You hit like a little girl! You are say that fed up. Bah! You represent a weak and inferior American race. All right, and it continues. <laughs> Look at you, you are no match for Hugo. You dress like a flag and you are a disgrace to your country. I'll put you out of your misery by delivering a bone crushing <laughs> a blow on this. <laughs> yeah, I dress like him flag and I wear a helmet to protect me maybe you should start wearing one some people make fun of my striped pants but that's okay it comes with a uniform if someone tells me that I'm a disgrace to my country yeah I take it personally sit tight General Preston that bag, big bald gorilla will get out of the harm's way. Boom. Crash. Oh no! The vat of lava boils on the poor Hugo. Ah, ew. Too slow for a freedom fighter. Yes, go ahead. Struggle like a small child while I take a bite off your neck. Ah. Ah, okay. Um, okay, okay, I've missed, uh, okay. He's about to lay into him. Then, ah! Ugh. Couldn't happen to a better fellow. Stabs him from behind with a wood stake. Uh, thanks. Are you all right, Rusty? Yeah, buddy, I'll live. Well, it's great to see a pair of Star Spangled Americans saving the day. Thank you for saving me in time. You bet, General. Ba -boom. Well, sounds like our green cavalry has arrived. Yes, Rusty? It's another job well done by our military and defender and Rusty. Remember, buy war bonds. <laughs> okay, now, when we get to... Let's get to the... Uh, well, second adventure, if I can pace myself just right. Uh, hmm. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Well, oh, you get a, uh, well, yeah, here we go. 
We get an epilogue beforehand. Sally Keene, government liaison, reports to the Secretary of Defense on General Preston's return. The mission was a great success, General Preston. It's safe, and the Defender and Rusty deserve all the credit, sir. I'll make sure they do. See, the ghoul was defeated and impaled with a wooden stake through his heart. His henchman, Hugo, was boiled alive accidentally by the Defender. Ah, you don't say. Yes, that's what happened. Very well. Good work. That will be all for today. Thank you very much, Miss King. You're welcome, sir. Good day. Kerplunk. This was a big mistake. My brother Hugo was not supposed to have been harmed. I need help. He rubs all help. <laughs> Poof. You have summoned me? Yes, I have a special favor to ask of you, my dear. The beginning of something new. If you recognize this villainess, it looks more like the Enchantress. And he goes more like, uh, you know, the Executioner. And so actually, these were like the World War II uh, versions of themselves. I decided to blend it in in this uh, type of timely continually before the actual parents of Executioner and the Enchantress. That's kind of a clever idea. And so, we'll get to the... Uh, well, let's get to the second adventure. We have some time here. Yep. Now last, the origin of USA Defender. Yes, fall 1941. Twelve Marines arrived from the bus at Fort, to Fort Middleton, all assembled for orientation. All right, ladies, you're the best when it comes to Marines. Somehow, I don't believe it. So... I want all of you there on obstacle course in 15 minutes. Sir, yes, sir. Rusty, show all these losers their tents. Sir, yes, sir. Hey, slow down, Marine. If you get past us, you wouldn't know where to go. Say, you look a little too young to be a Marine. How did you get in? Well, my dad and the good friends with the general. When both of my parents died, he took me into the Marines. My name's Don Stevens. I'm Rusty. It's nice to meet you. All right. Mm -hmm. And we have the obstacle course. 300-yard stretch aggravation. Tweeko! All right, I can do this. The other guys can climb over that wall. Why can't I? Come on, Steven. Is that the best you can do? My 90-year-old aunt can run circles around you. Pick it up, you pansy. You're a poor excuse for a Marine. <laughs> Ah, pfft. All right, go around and finish up. Now get out of my sight before you make me sick. After the course. Hey, you all right? Yeah, I thought I was in shape. That course sure got the best of me. All right. And let's see. Oh, okay. What the heck is page three and four? All right, uh, yeah, page three. And then we're at the, uh, that chow. Chow hall. Boy, I never thought this chow would be so, this good. Yeah, well, you better slow down before you eat us out of this place. Collinsworth, Hargrove, Gillespie, and Stevens. Report to outpost six immediately and await further instructions. Oh, that can't be good. That's special cleanup duty. And there's Hargrove there. A government-issued truck stands by the waiting four Marines uh, to take them to their destination. At the facility, behind the curio shop. Okay, man, you have your mops and cleaning supplies. You have two hours to haul the damaged material out of the lab and clean it up. No lurking around and no horseplay. It's serious business. Whoa. I wonder what happened to that guy. Uh, I don't know. It must be something we should know about. <laughs> I guess you would know who this guy is. Uh, all right. Ah, uh, that's going the way it's going to be, Private. Now get to work. Inside the secret government laboratory, Army and Marine servicemen are hauling away damaged equipment while Don and Rusty are mopping what's left. A rodent runs past Rusty. Squeak! <laughs> ah! The broken glass tube hurtles through the air through the mop toward Don Stevens' exposed arm. 
two. So ah, what the hell happened? Ah, stupid glass rod. Throw that in the trash. I'm sorry, Don. The mop slipped out of my hands when a rat surprised me. Are you okay? A little shocked, I get it. I don't understand why rats would hang around this place. Okay, Marine. I'll have an MP escort you to the service hospital two blocks away. Reveille at the Marine Corps. Marine camp for every Marine. And their company awakes from a restful sleep. Including Don Stevens when he pulls covers off and... Wow! I got muscles. And what happened to my buddy? Jeez, what happened to you? You've been working out in your sleep? Yeah, something like that. We better suit up. Because we have PT in 10 minutes. Physical training and exercise. All right, Stevens. You can stop showing up with the push-ups. You've done enough. 98, 99, 100. Ah. The obstacle course. Boom. There's Sergeant Hawkins there. What the? Stevens did 100, 100 push-ups and vaulting a 12-foot wall? Something's weird and wonderful happening to me. This must be my new lease on life. Wow, Phil, you really made a break for it. Looks like sleep did you wonders. Yeah, appears that way. Later in the evening, the Marine Company retires after a long day. Don Stevens' ear twitches, a voice is heard from afar. Ah, that terrible missile is stored in Warehouse 7. We must break in and recover it for the Third Reich. What? Was there a dream? Something tells me it's not. And I have to go to a Warehouse 7. I'm glad that Rusty Kid's asleep. I really don't want him to get involved in what I'm about to do. Don recovers some civilian clothes with a ski mask and a mission. Uh, sneaks outside the tents, looking behind, make sure no one notices. Lurking in a shadow follows the mask. United States Marine Stevens. Yes. And. Inside Warehouse 7. Ah, the special missile is made from. Thank you for meeting us, gentlemen. This was made from raw materials here in America with German ingenuity. It transmits from any direction. I have heard enough. Ah, killing the Americaner. Three trench coats, birdies on one stone. Oh. Take that, you crowds. Ha ha, I got in my sights. No, you don't. They will never have the targeting device which operates the missile inside this case. Just flips right over. Hey, I missed you, Monocle. Thanks for thinking out loud, you Nazi jerk. We'll tie up the Nazis and call the MPs. Great job, Rusty. I'm going to destroy the case with the directional device. Wow. There you have it. Yep, uh, there's more to it. I still have, of course, the introduction right here. Then we have a follow-up. Um, wait a minute, hold on. I think I'm missing some pages. This is the basic gist of it. Yeah, I'm thinking about republishing this adventure. This is like the 80th anniversary of USA Comics number one. And, of course, I have pretty much the originals. Now I'll republish them and send it out to, and sell them to you, my trusted subscribers and, and people on the internet who are intrigued by USA Defender. All right, well, let's get to the actual, let's get to, I kind of like to get to this one. This is like, you know, years and years later. And Rusty Collins, the sidekick of USA Defender, walks to his apartment. Well, it's nice to have a CIA pension to keep the riff over my head. Ah, so anyway, well, please like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. 
Hey man, it's Apex Comics. Have a wonderful day.